Right, the concept of this video is very, very old and stupid. Uh, at the end of 2022, I made a list of games that were coming out, ones that actually had release dates of 2023 on Steam. I put those into a notepad and I was like, yeah, I'll get around to this. I downloaded the trailers and I just never got around to making it. But then in, <laughs> in December 2023, I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I still put out my most anticipated games of 2023? with days left in 2023. Uh, anyway, it's now the 16th of March 2024, and I still have this folder and I haven't made the video because I'm just inherently lazy. However, I thought it'd be funny to still do it uh, so that we can see that games that have, you know, air quotes release dates of 2023 still end up taking for fucking ever, or maybe even never come out. Maybe some of these things will just never release. Uh, we'll see some things that actually kept to their promise, but surprisingly, many of them failed. Street Fighter 6, 1010, no notes. This game was playable at events in September 2022 and was announced for a June 2023 release, which seemed like an eternity away. Um, but it had like two betas months beforehand. Plenty of time, came out, delivered. Best fighting game in years. Completely shafted out of Game of the Year awards because, you know, it doesn't have a deep story or whatever. Oh well. Gravity Circuit is a game that came out in July of 2023, so, you know. Nice little clap for them there. It's Mega Man reminiscent, but I, I guess it's closer to Shovel Knight in that they tried to insert little customizable abilities to cater to every whiner on the internet. You have things where you take less damage off a hit, suff of shots, suff of spikes, uh, no knockback on hit. You can have a double jump if you want. You can get more energy if you want. It feels like they, they just tried to cater to everyone and as a result had uh, a game that I don't really feel all that excited about. Plus watching uh, other people run it after I played it, I see an awful lot of repetition during levels and the tile sets aren't that distinctive from level to level so there's a lot of deja vu. Like if, if, you, if you pointed to a stage and asked me to remember a boss, I, I'd be fucking stumped. Cooks of Delicious 4 aka Cooks of Forever came out in early access at some point that I can't bother looking up, but uh, they essentially threw the old gameplay in the bin and tried doing something new, and it's not great. So much so that the guy, you know, the guy, the, oh, the guy that made game, what they called uh, developers, yeah, said that uh, they're they gonna kind of have to go back to the drawing board and uh, rethink things, which is great considering it's already out. You know, it's early access, but it's still out to a degree. I was really looking more forward to the Jonathan Gear soundtrack, because despite 3 being shite, he still put out bangers. Um, unfortunately, this is like his least interesting work, but uh, hey, uh, imagine the subject matter, am I right? Congrats to Rusted Moss for actually coming out in 2023 like they said it would. Unfortunately, ultimately, not a fan. I felt like the I got locked in combat rooms too often, and I don't think combat was this game's strong suit. There's one very irritating area at the bottom left of the map where it was just like, you go left through a big combat room, then you go up and then you go right through a big combat room, and there'd be a wall with a switch on the other side, then you go up and uh, there'd be a wall with a switch on the other side, and you go left through a big combat room. Then you go up again, and then you go right through a big combat room, and then there'd be a wall with a switch behind it, you know, a shortcut yet to unlock. It's like, yeah, yeah, we've played Souls likes, mate. This, this is just irritating. Extreme Evolution Drive to Divinity, the latest visual abomination from Sam Atlas, came out in January 2024. Uh, I haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, kind of slipped through the cracks, but yeah, actually came out. Good. Um, clamping noise goes here. I was a big fan of The Surge 2, so I was mildly looking forward to The Lords of the Fallen, uh, considering it went uh, Lords of the Fallen, Surge 1, Surge 2, but it turns out The Lords of the Fallen, the second game, isn't even made by the developers of The Surge 2, which, well, that sucks. It was a little worrying when they kept talking about the release of the game and they weren't showing any straight-up gameplay. Surge 2 had, like, straight-up gameplay months before the game came out, so it was mildly worrying, but uh, yeah, retrospectively, not the same developers, whatever, whatever. Every pre-release trailer was like some narrated piece being like, oh dude, the engine, the, the, the lighting, the layered worlds and what have you, but uh, long story short, game came out, mixed reviews, uh, I'm not sure why, 
I don't know. Knowing Steam, it's probably just that it doesn't work on a fucking toaster. Paper Trail has a release date. Woo! May 21st. It had a beta recently on its Discord. I uh, guess it must have been a success if they have a release date now. So, you know, um, once again, a little clap. You got there eventually. Congrats on passing the finish line. Unless, you know, a comet strikes Earth. It's time to get to work, Beck. <laughs> Biogun is a twin-stick metroidvania where you're a vaccine represented by a pig that's shot into the ass of a dog to go and clean up its virus. Uh, yeah. Mechanically, resemblances to Hollow Knight, but uh, aesthetically, nothing like fucking Hollow Knight. And with the twin-stick shooting vibe, it's also mechanically nothing like Hollow Knight. You don't use a sword, you use a gun. Different. Broken Reality 2000, presumably a sequel to Broken Reality, uh, haven't heard a peep about this since its announcement, and it doesn't seem to have any news or updates on Steam Store, currently penciled in for a supposed Q4 2024 release. <laughs> yeah, okay indie dev, sure. So, Patrick's Parabox came out in March 2022, and around the same time it popped up on the Steam Store, so did a demo of this game, Inbox Unbox, which I believe is a Japanese indie developed title with a very similar gimmick going on in that you can uh, insert yourself into smaller boxes within boxes in this Sokoban puzzler. Um, unfortunately, its current release date is to be announced. Yeah. Heatwave is a solid 2D fighter with pixel art and uh, music. Yep, it's got music. Um, it's not complete yet because they've been working on story mode. Yeah, that's right, they're doing a story mode and it's going to be an entire visual novel. And it's been taking a really long time. It seems like the game balance is set in something resembling stone and pretty much won't be changed. I think they refer to it as like 0 0.99. And I think full release is just waiting on this visual novel to get completed. Uh, yeah, it's... He believes only like five dollars or less on Ichio. Uh, I don't know if it's on Steam, but yeah, it's it's really cheap and it's pretty damn good. Maybe you should check it out before it reaches full release? Just a suggestion. Mini Shoot Adventures now has a release date of April 2nd. Uh, I guess it's like one of those top-down Zeldas if it was a 360-degree shooter. Uh, concept's pretty cool. I mean, I'll play it. So, a couple of years ago, there was a Taiwanese dev team that made uh, horror games. I think one is called Detention, the other is called Devotion. And, uh, oh, they, they put a Winnie the Pooh meme in their game, and uh, the president of China was a little bitch. Uh, that was Red Candle Games, and they now completely changed genre and are doing what appears to be, on its surface, some kind of like 2D action game. I'm not sure if it's a Metroidvania, but it resembles games of that ilk. Um, there was a demo a while back. There was a Kickstarter, so they had a demo, and it was pretty good. You had to like apply bombs. Play bombs to your enemies, and there was a whole drawn out boss battle section. There was, there was just, it felt like it was lacking a little je ne sais quoi in the boss battle. Like maybe it was like a, a lack of screen shake or hit stun or so, something. It didn't feel quite as punchy, but hey, you know, they're changing genre completely, and not everyone's first time in a new genre goes entirely smoothly. So uh, I hope they do it right. I, I'm not too mad about them for uh, taking more than a year than they supposedly thought they would, but uh, you know. Hopefully the end product's good. Valley Peaks is a first-person climbing game where you're also in a town of cute frogs, I guess. Um, despite the cuteness, the graphics have like these textures to them that kind of make them look rough and... Not all that visually appearing. And uh, there's like some sound effects that aren't the best, but you know, it, it's been over a year since the demo. You know, hopefully they've... Uh gotten some feedback about that because if they haven't I, I uh, it's here this is feedback the sounds are bad um but yeah um there's other first person climbers out as well this year lawn's law is coming but it's not part of this video because it didn't fulfill the 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 criteria of claiming that your game was coming out in 2023 but i've seen valley peaks at events i've seen it at egx and whatnot and you know they got their little boards uh, it's there. They're making it still. 
they're uh, out in public, they want you to see it, which means hopefully it will be completed, right? I mean, what kind of game would show up to EGX multiple years in a row without being released? Uh, it could be any game, I definitely don't have anything specific in mind here.